This is Randy Allen from Engraving Concepts. Today we're going to look at a virtual laser demonstration of using three different lasers to etch stainless steel tags. We're going to start with the setup and the software side. So in our layout design software, I was emailed an AutoCAD DXF file and what I found as I sped through this uh, quickly, I'm just showing how to take that AutoCAD file and break it into pieces because the elements were not closed and they were individual elements that would not let me fill the letters. So I used a tool in CorelDRAW called the Smart Fill tool. It came in real handy and was able to fill the letters solid black that will render much better in a laser machine. What I also saw was this font looked very close to Times New Roman, so as I typed that out, I could tell if the user did not have to or require the stencil font, you could really just type this font in directly from Windows. I was also provided two other logos that were in outline line art form, which means they were easily resized and selected, ungrouped, and then filled black. Filling these black will just prove better results when laser engraving onto things like anodized aluminum or stainless steel for the ceramic coating. So after I made those black, I was able to then be ready to send jobs to the laser. First, the Epilog CO2 laser. Now this is a finished product to show you beforehand what we're shooting for. And this is a picture of a CO2 laser cartridge. This is a modular component manufactured by Epilog Laser. It is a metal air-cooled laser. It has ceramic on the inside, and it is a plug-and-play consumable part that's the part of the laser system. Now what we're going to find is that CO2 lasers, the light wave or wavelength that is output from this laser tube, will not burn bare metal. And the wattage that we provide out of these tubes it will not put a black mark on bare metal. So if we take a stainless steel plate, put it inside the machine, this tube will not burn that plate. So what we have to do is take a metal marking solution. It's a liquid ceramic spray paint, if you will. And once we apply that spray paint to the metal, we let that dry. Then once we're able to let that dry, put that in the machine and burn it, we're able to get a permanent black mark. Let's show you how it works. So we have the job open in the CorelDRAW software. Now we're going to simply click on print. We're not going to spend much time here, but once we choose our printer and go to the printer driver, here's where we can either manually or from a library set some preferences. But once we send the job to the laser, it is very similar to printing to an inkjet printer. Once we print the job to the machine, it shows up on the display, it shows a job number and a job name. We're going to insert the plate into the upper left corner of the machine, close the door. We're going to make sure our exhaust fans are turned on. When we push go, this particular system has an autofocus feature, so it's going to automatically focus or touch the surface of the plate, lower down the right distance away from the lens assembly, and then start the laser. As the lens assembly moves left and right, that laser beam is turning on and off very quickly. And wherever the laser does not hit, it will wash off with water. But wherever the laser does hit, it's making a permanent bonded black mark to the steel. This metal marking solution works on almost every metal. It needs to be a raw alloy. It can't have any polish or protective coating on the surface. It has to be a raw metal for this to work. So this plate took about 6 minutes 37 seconds. Now we're not finished. Once we etch that, now we have to put that under some water and wherever the laser didn't hit is going to wash right off into the sink. The ceramic solution just falls off with water.
and there is our finished metal marking plate. So again, we have a metal marked plate that's permanently etched with the CO2 laser system. This was done with a 60 watt laser. I would recommend no less than 50 watts to perform this application on a daily basis. The next machine we're going to look at is an Epilogue FiberMark Gantry Laser. This is the finished plate, and we'll explain the difference in a Gantry Fiber Laser in just a moment, but that's going to be a key word in using fiber lasers. So we start with our layout as we did on the other machine. We have our design ready to print, so we click on the print button and choose the fiber mark as our printer. Going to our preferences is where we would manually set speed and power, or we could pull up a library of custom or saved settings. Then we'll click on print, and that will send the job to the laser system. So with the job at the laser system, we're going to put the plate in the upper left-hand corner and raise the table up and focus manually on a fiber laser. So this laser is laser engraving bare metal without any protective polish or coat, it'll burn the raw alloy. It took about six and a half minutes to burn this plate without any special ceramic coating. What you'll notice is on this particular model, the fiber mark, you have a 24 by 12 inch etching area. Next, we're going to move to a fiber laser that is called a galvo steered fiber laser. We at Engraving Concepts represent the laser here. This is by Pikema Electrox. These machines come in a variety of different sizes, but primarily the marking field stays in a 4 inch or 6 inch square area. This has a set of mirrors that rotate very quickly and direct the beam straight down to the platform. So it rotates the mirrors, scattering the beam at a very high rate of speed. This has its own software that comes with the Tecma Electrox, so it sets up a little bit different, but it is very easy to use software. We're going to apply a certain level of hatch fills and angles to the inside fills of the letters. Since this machine does not act as much like a printer as the epilogues, this system steers a beam and those lines indicate where that laser beam is going to go. And so there is a hatch and a crosshatch pattern and you can tell here that we're using different material settings that are saved and you can add to this library, different types of metals, alloys, and engineered plastics. Once you choose a particular setting, you say OK. So we're going to take the plate that we were sent and put that on the platform of the Galvo steered fiber laser. These systems have a shuttle door that opens. Now this also same system is sold without the enclosure, but you do have to wear safety glasses. So once we raise and set the table onto the platform, we're going to focus this plate using the red dot pointer. Another handy feature this machine has is the ability to see the perimeter marking area and you can do a practice run to see where exactly it's going to burn. But once we've sent the job and pushed run or mark, you can see that the beam it doesn't act more like a printer, but it acts, it steers the beam straight down and it burns super fast. It operates in nanoseconds where the other systems, the gantry type style lasers, would operate in minutes. But this also actually burned into the metal. And you can provide just about as any kind of depth that you want. At a certain speed, you can engrave all the way through the metal if you'd like. So that is a bare steel plate laser etched with a fiber in a Galvo steered fiber laser beam. So that's the three ways. Fiber Galvo or fiber gantry or a CO2 in a gantry system.
So that is our product line. So in summary, we took a CO2 with a cartridge, sprayed it with a ceramic coating, used the CO2 laser to burn a permanent mark to the surface of the alloy. Next, we used a 30 watt fiber mark. So this fiber mark was able to burn into the metal to make a permanent black mark. The benefit there is we can lay out many tags in a big table, push go and walk away, come back and replace the tray with another set of tags. And lastly, we use the laser gear and the galvo steer fiber laser to permanently burn a mark. Thank you for watching and let us know what you think of the samples. We're ready to answer any questions.